be okay. Uh, he's working more on the, the video trailer, so when he comes on, we can look at that progress too. Okay, cool. Yeah, his computer just wasn't happy. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so we have kind of just a simple home page with some sliders of just different vignettes throughout the, the yeah. model and the different, yeah. yeah, the different areas. So I'll just let that play for a minute. And that's kind of the starting point. I don't know if we've already seen these ones, but it just kind of replays and it plays automatically as soon as you go on the page. Okay, looks good. Um, I mean, it'd be nice if there's people. Yeah. Or, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's intentional. Yeah, okay. It would be nice if there's but people. And like, maybe that's a way that yeah. I'd see him perhaps as a component of the game in some way, like they would tie into some component, whether mm -hmm. it's explicitly the volunteers or some other aspect, some other measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't really, um, I guess, nailed down if there's going to be one person or if it's someone like making the system and there's just people in the game, so. Yeah. Hey, Simon. I think he's hey, on what's up? Sorry, I don't, I started to export from Illustrator some stuff like 20 minutes ago or 15 minutes ago and it just, the whole thing. Are you on the, your uh, secret hidden, hidden, hidden desk cam? That's what it looks like. <laughs> I'm, I'm just on my phone. Your phone, yeah, I got it. I sort of figured. Yeah. It just looks like a spy cam. <laughs> <laughs> I can't like search it. Other than it only mattered that I, I could hear you. <laughs> yeah. You're you no, know, you're fine. It only mattered that we could hear each other. So I'm just sort of joking on the view. It doesn't really matter. If it's oh, a, okay. Yeah, I don't actually know what my video looks like right now. Okay. No worries. Yeah, you're good. We just opened the website. Um and then Mike made a good comment about um, adding people to the renderings or like if 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 it's somehow a part of the game with people in the scenes and and tying that into the game somehow so that we just started so that was just the first thing gotcha. um, so you hit this menu here and then there's tabs that you can kind of go through so all of the components of the project will be built into here nice so as like a first page you would go to the about and then the YouTube video will be here. This is a placeholder. It's obviously yeah. <laughs> not a project. Um, and then um, just the short version of the discourse um, and just kind of a summary. And that was basically what we had read in our presentation last week. And then once you go in, um, we have the three levels. And then you can go to like either level one, level two, or level three. And then just tying in the, the icons throughout on yep. the website, so it's easier to kind of follow. Um, so then each level has a separate page, and then as you hover over, it shows the analysis mode. Nice. Kind of, kind of up here. Um, and then we have the blocks per level, and then when you hover over those, you'll get the inputs and outputs, and then the little icon for whether it's like for growing, um, or in this case, preparing food. So that just changes or distributing. You get the, the blue hands. Um, and then the systems analysis mode, similar to the, uh, the opportunity one. And then at the end, you have a little kind of congratulations. You've you know, got all the units 100%. And then it'll have a blurb about moving on to the next level. And then you can go from here, level two. Um, which similar layout for all three of the levels where you hover over and the opportunity zones pop up. 
Um, same thing with the blocks. Uh, we've added a few more for just kind of wrapping up all the categories under each level. Yeah. For the various pieces. So like this one is, um, it's all the canning equipment that you would need. And then it kind of ties into the shelf with the canned goods on it that you can use in the store. So we're just starting to tie in all those pieces that the inputs and outputs um, fill in for each other. And then the analysis mode on that level. Nice. So that's basically, I think this level is the same as when we presented on Monday. Um, the language still needs some work, um, but it, it basically says <clears throat> that everyone, like now that you have the knowledge and the food, or at this level, it's now that you have the health and the support, then you can move forward. So it kind of just summarizes what you've achieved and then what you've unlocked, basically. And then we go to level three, uh, same idea. Uh, we've increased the budget for this level because as we were going through some of these blocks, we put a big price tag on them. It's not necessarily a realistic price, but it's a bigger number that you could still attain within the game and yeah. it's still understandable. Um, but we made, we made it significantly more than the other levels. So we played around with those numbers a little bit um, and added new blocks. And then level three changed a little bit where um, we refined it a little bit more so that there's a relationship between the blocks that create the community center. So there's like a proximity boost, we're calling it, um, which starts to try and talk about space planning and layouts because we were trying to tie the relationships in at this level as the other levels. Yeah. So in this case, what we were thinking is like, and it'll show up in the video a little more um, clearly in terms of the steps, but basically if, if you just have the one counter and you have tables that are too far away from it, the game like won't be happy about that. It's not an efficient layout. So the more you can bring them closer together, you would get this boost um, because it would be kind of a better layout, making a better use of the space and making a better experience in the space. And then same with um, the shell that generates the produce. If that has a good relationship to the preparation blocks, you would get a boost for that as well. Um, <clears throat> we shifted some of these outputs around a little bit. So the, um, the shell, which would be the first unit you put down, that would require maintenance, um, knowledge, and volunteers. And then the outputs would be produce from the greenery that you're growing in the shell. It would create gathering as people, you know, come to this interesting structure. And then um, well-being in terms of um, like a nice place to be in and having the greenery inside with fresh air and stuff like that. Um, and then for the, the preparation block, which would be the second one you put in, the base here, you would need the produce from the shell. Um, you would need kind of support from the community, which you gained in level two, so that's why that's there. And then volunteers to kind of help um, like work in those blocks, whether it's making food for an event or whatever it may be. So the outputs would be that you can host workshops. Um, it would be a place where you could prepare food and you would get income from events that maybe you can host. And then the last piece, the furniture one, you would need the base and the shell in place. You would need the prepared food that you're ultimately like sharing with people and participants. And then the output would be dialogue, experience, and then relationships from all of that. So we tried to make them a little more um, I guess intangible and kind of social outputs at this level. Yeah. Um, so those would be the three levels. And then you would then, you could go to the game board eventually. And then when you click this link, it'll bring you to like Autodesk Viewer or some kind of platform where you can go all around this board where we've placed all the parts. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so we have like the garden and the market where we started at the school yeah. and the, the round community center there. We also have the grocery store populated and the food park over here. And that was kind of the basis of level two. And then added another market here in this parking lot and then showed kind of like the sidewalk scenario with the trees and the trellises. Yeah. Over here is the, the other community center, the square looking one is over there. And then um, um, 
uh, community garden. Like this is an existing community garden patch, but we just added some of our blocks to that area as well. So you'd be able to kind of just navigate the map to see all those. Um, but we don't have that model ready yet. And then the discourse page. Um, this is still a draft, but kind of a placeholder. It would just kind of go there and it would just be that wider conversation about food security in the project and all of that. Um, and then on this map, you can actually click it and like go to satellite if you want. Yeah. The map. Or you can like zoom in. Um, and then it's just like, it's, I think it's like linked to Google directly. The website yeah. had it as a feature so you can kind of go in and see the whole thing. So I thought that was cool. So that's that. And then the last page is a contact page where you can like go in and if you fill this out and submit it, it sends Simon and I an email. Okay. <laughs> I'll test it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's looks, where it looks great. Can you go back to the game board? Yep. So you, you, what were you thinking? There's some kind of like models in the cloud that you can navigate. Yeah, like um, I know Autodesk Viewer, you can upload your Revit model okay. and then it lets you like walk around. You can go to first person or you can be more of like a high, higher level bird's eye and you can move through the model. I think being able to open that up and whether you do it in the website or I think like walking through all the steps in the system, it's pretty complex. So I think people are gonna have a lot of questions. And so I think as you present it, coming back to this is, a, I think, a good strategy. It's nice to see the big picture. And you'll want to be able, if you can do it through the website or if you just open the model live and you can kind of move around it, that would be, I think, really helpful. Okay, yeah, as part of the presentation. Yeah, correct. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, I guess we were maybe imagining we'd start with the website and then when you go to about, like that would be our chance to kind of give a high level summary and then yeah, that's good. and then play the video because um, Simon has like all these steps kind of mapped out that really show like you place this block and the menu adjusts and all of that. So I think just with that quick video off the bat, it'll kind of clarify how the game works and then we could right. probably gloss over the levels a little bit more because I think the video is going to capture most of this stuff. And then maybe to your point, we would go right to the game board after the video, maybe? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay. And then we can always come back and finish up just showing the rest of the website features. Yeah. Because we don't, I don't think in the video we get too specific about explaining all the blocks and stuff like that. Um, so we'll just have to see what what's the best way to go back and forth to cover everything. Is your computer working, Simon? Like to show the, the video stuff or not so much? The computer's back up, but the start of the video that I had in Premiere is gone. It wasn't a whole lot, so it's not like I'm set back multiple hours. Okay. <clears throat> but um, I can walk us through all the screenshots if that's kind of the ideal. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. Now, uh, I'll share my entire screen. <clears throat> is this, what is, what is, what is this? Is this just a rendered view? Yeah, so basically we, we went through um, and kind of storyboarded each level yeah. to show in the video. And then there's kind of a complex part of each level that's shown in a little bit more detail. And then it's sort of a time lapse of screenshots through um, the completion of that level. So this is within level one, um, <laughs> which is probably the most kind of well-documented level, I think, within the video, where you kind of start out from the beginning and yeah. then we'll, we'll go a portion of the way through and then the time lapse will kind of 
take you the rest of the way through to completion. And then level two and well, level three actually takes you all the way through as well, but level two sort of picks up halfway as you'll see. Um, so we start with <clears throat> the overall um, just sort of rendered view here. So we're using the same view template for these aerial shots as we were for the vignettes. Um, and so then you enter into, this will be the opportunity analysis mode once we uh, once I populate that information over it. Um, and then you start to zoom in and look at the development of the system. Um, and so if you guys can see here, um, our menu, well, our menu has been there, but once they place this block, it adjusts accordingly. So you get the production um, bonus there, you get the uh, knowledge bonus in terms of its proximity to the school, and then your budget adjusts accordingly as well, and um, according to the expenses that we uh, we kind of talked over. Um, so the price of this block is 50, your budget adjusts accordingly, and your volunteer count adjusts accordingly as well. Um, this is apparently where my computer was at when it crashed. <laughs> so this file, I'll just have to re-export it from the Illustrator file. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that was just the placement, that previous screenshot was just the placement of the bean plot and everything adjusted accordingly. And then this is the placement of the cucumber plot and everything adjusts accordingly as, um, there as well. And then you would enter into the analysis mode. This is where all that um, more complex information would get layered on and you would see that you're producing food, but you're not distributing it in any way. So your food is starting to kind of pile up. Um, there's probably some warnings that are associated with that. And so then the next step would be that you exit the analysis mode and then place a, place a market block. Um, and then to kind of wrap up that level, you would go through um, all these other screenshots of just, you know, placing another tomato patch, placing a bean patch, so on and so forth. And then you see that the, <clears throat> the progress bars and the budget and everything adjust accordingly. Um, and the income and expenses, all this stuff adjusts as well. And so the intent for this would just be to kind of tab through it pretty quickly within the video. And then once you reach the completion at the end, um, we'll just have kind of a, a quick little animation that will then carry you over to level two, um, which is similar. Um, but as I mentioned in this one, we start with the community garden basically already created. Um, and then it starts to look at the process of kind of utilizing existing store infrastructure. So zooming in, and, and we have this sign, you know, that unlocks these different existing buildings for use. Um, so then you see more detail on the grocery and you see the floor kind of pop up out of the building, which is um, essentially the way that we're intending to, to allow the user to place blocks within the building. Yeah. And so then maybe they place a fruit stand and a cashier stand, and then maybe they place this open um, front refrigerated display case. And they can enter the analysis mode then and see that they don't actually have anything that's producing um, products for the refrigerated display case. And so then, um, oops, then jumping back to the time lapse for this level, and they place a sign next door that unlocks this existing restaurant um, with that kitchen space, and then they place kind of the um, cold food preparation table and so then that allows them maybe to, to place another one of those refrigerated display cases and then they place a canning table in the restaurant which allows them to place a canned shelf <clears throat> another cash register and then and then maybe the donation shelf there and then again this uh, similar process unfolds for <coughs> for level three as well where you start with kind of an overall view, zoom in, um, place the, the community center shell, place a prep block, uh, and then the, the player starts to populate the interior with tables. But then when they enter the analysis mode, they're going to see, um, similar to what Alyssa showed with the level three analysis, is that the tables basically aren't 
they're not efficiently laid out. They're not in close proximity to that prep table. And so they're not um, basically giving you as much of a community boost as they could be. Uh, and so then exiting the analysis mode, the player maybe places another prep block in there. And then the time lapse of this one is essentially just the population of the kind of the rest of the tables within the space. That's what we got right now. And then I think we're, we're both, <clears throat> you know, envisioning it essentially as uh, sort of a, I don't want to say typical game trailer video, but the, you know, there'll be um, basically some title slides as well that sort of pop up and give you um, quick little overviews of sort of the, the broad ideas of the game. Um, and yeah, I think that's about, that's about where we're at with this right now. Uh, it looks great. I think the video is going to be really helpful and effective. So I'm excited to see it come together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it makes sense to sort of the way you put it, Alyssa, to start with the kind of introduction and then show the video and then kind of walk through the layers individually. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the website too kind of like really presents you with a lot of info in those analysis modes. And that's that's kind of the nitty gritty. And then I think the video here, our intent is just to show some of that, but then also just kind of how it works with the gameplay as a whole. Yeah, I think the video will be a good precursor to the levels on the website because at this level, like. I guess not at this level, but at this like oh, point great. in time after the summary, like we just want them to see that you place blocks and then there's analysis. Right. And then we can go to the website to just show more details about the inputs and outputs and some of the warnings. I guess my, my maybe one comment would be like, is there a way to understand like what it looks like to fail in, in one of these instances where something goes wrong and you sort of, there's a time lapse that shows that, or there's a series of images. There's a, you know, a, um, a, a, I'll say time lapse. If you, I can't think of a better word, but a sequence essentially that shows failure at some point. Because I, I think it's it's all believable, but I think to understand the kind of variables that are at play, I think it would be helpful to show what it would look like. Like at one moment in the video, you maybe perhaps you go down two paths and you kind of set it up like there's two paths will go down one is kind of the path, this path whatever its name is it ultimately leads to the system not working and then you then you kind of rewind and go back and this is what the path forward looks like in terms of um producing a healthy system i think the more you can kind of layer in those moments or kind of help us understand what where a choice is being made and how a choice not necessarily it's clear where a choice is being made. It's it's not so clear how a choice, the negative impact, or just the impact in general. It doesn't necessarily have to be negative. Maybe there, there could be a whole spectrum. There could be really positive to kind of middle of the road. It just maybe takes longer to negative impact. And not that you necessarily need to kind of do all of that, but I think kind of helping us understand, us, the audience, how some of those impacts um, take place depending on choice would be, I think, helpful to understand the variables and how they work together as a system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagine that there's probably um, a pretty simple way to, to kind of maybe show a path to failure within level two in the video. Um, you know, where we're kind of harping on like, manage your system appropriately, like manage inputs, outputs appropriately, um, or else the system kind of decays. And I think there's a, I think we can certainly show that. I think now that you know how the system works, right, it's, it is easier to go back into, it's easier to make it, it clear how it doesn't work. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, that's correct. In terms of where you're at in the project. 
Yeah, level two might be the best place to do it. So I feel like there's a lot of complexity in level two. And mm -hmm. then it might be good just to run through level one, just at a high level, like you're placing blocks. There's these three categories. You're missing one category, so you'd add it. So like, that's cool. So yeah, I agree. I think level two is the place to, to do it. Yeah, because I don't. you wouldn't necessarily want to start level one with failure. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it would, game over. I mean, it would be like nice to, yeah, I mean, just kind of game over. <laughs> you like the little fade to black with the you die? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like it would be easier to fail on level one, but um, level two might be the better place to show it. Right. I, I guess my only, my only other comment would be uh, I sort of wish the colors and the materials were a little more vibrant. Like it's it's sort of like a game, but it's like has like realistic materials, and so I feel like I think compositionally you want the energy to be drawn here. So if these are all like a different color, or there's some kind of just visually kind of grabs your attention over here, and this is more subdued, or the green is all brighter. Um, I mean, if you get a chance to do that, I would explore the kind of just the color palette. Other than that, it looks awesome. Cool. It's fun to go through this, yeah. Alyssa, I wonder if there's a way, maybe I'll play around briefly with the view template and see if I can kind of. Mm -hmm. It's just. If we it's, think that that's necessary. Yeah, I think it, there's value to doing that. It's just the reformatting of all the views yeah. and then the website and then the video. It's just, it's a lot of reformatting. Right. But maybe there's, maybe we can like pick um, strategically, you know? Um, cause it, maybe it's better to have, I don't know, is it better to have something more vibrant in one of the aspects or to have all three match? Cause I think we, I think we might have to decide between, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to reformat all of it for Monday. Uh, yeah, that is a good point. Yeah. Uh, like, is it, is it worth only doing it on the vignettes or only doing it on the video or is it better to keep them all? looking the same just because with the website with the layers like to to change the underlays it like screws up the ratio of everything yeah at it all but I'm okay if, if it deviates it allows you to explore it yeah so that's okay. what you're saying so I, sort of what i'm hearing is that the website you know because of the complexity of it that's basically that's set and then the video you have an opportunity perhaps to look at some of the color and materiality in the video itself. Maybe. Is that correct? Maybe. How, how hard is it? It's just, I think it's just onerous to kind of repull. Yeah, it's just kind of yeah. tedious. But um, like some of the ones uh, with the existing restaurant and stuff, like I had to repull those um, just because I zoomed out a little bit more to get that framed better. Uh, but that's all set in stone if it's just as simple as just messing around with the view template. And so it's already like when I go to export all these views, it's already in the view template and it's already changed. Um, I mean, the biggest time constraint of that is just like waiting for the JPEG to export, which is not, you know, that's like 15, 20 seconds maybe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just a little tedious, but I think <clears throat> if we figure it out quickly, we can probably capture it. Yeah, I think the vignettes could match fairly easily because those are an easier swap out on the website. Mm -hmm. So if we whatever we did in the video, I think the vignettes should match at the very least. And I think that that might be okay. Are the vignettes like the, the splash page when the, you, it scrolls through the images, is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. We could get those to match the video. And I guess the website, the other levels are more the analysis mode where everything's grayed out anyway. So I guess yeah. those those wouldn't be affected anyway, which is good because those, those are the picky ones. Yeah, there's actually nothing on the website with like, uh, yeah. color in the surrounding environment at all, right? Yeah, the vignettes on the... Yeah, the vignettes. Yeah. I think visual, the analysis mode visually is really strong. It's, it's a really nice move to flip through and then kind of, and I'd sort of imagine the analysis information would be part of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, other than that, it's awesome. I think the people too, how we're gonna graphically do that. Um, because if they're, if they're in the vignettes, 
I don't know if they need to be in the website. Maybe not. Maybe the website's more about placing the blocks and it's just a matter of adding them to the vignettes. Would they show up in the video, do you think? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> I'm just curious if, if the people, because I think it's, you know, there was a discussion very early on about incorporating people into the game, um, but I think they only ever existed kind of as entourage. And mm -hmm. so... Well, I guess I'd be a little hesitant to include them in the video. Well, they're 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 volunteers, right? Right. Yeah. That's, I I feel like that they're like a you know not to objectify people, but like they're another they're another variable that shows up in some way. Yeah. You know, like a market or a plot or a greenhouse. You know, a person is a a component of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's sort of what I meant by it. And then almost in that sense, they they would be diagrammatic, and they'd even maybe take on the color that you guys are used to color code. The, the their role in the game. Like yeah, you mean every, like have them colored the same color as whatever process they're related to? Like if their production yeah, would be green? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, green it's a diagram. Too. So I think you want, I think there's an opportunity there to kind of relate it to that variable in the game. Okay. So like in this scene we're looking at, you'd have green people near the garden and you'd have blue people near the market. Yes. And that would kind of show that the, you have the market volunteers in the market and the garden volunteers in the garden. Um, it's a really diverse community. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I wonder, yeah, I guess it's just the 3D aspect or could we can we photoshop them in simon for the video like once you have the image exported is can we just like photoshop people or is that going to be awful uh it would be a lot easier to just do them in revit yeah we'll have to play with the template because they're going to show up realistic and they're going to be horrible <laughs> yeah i would just do a silhouette yeah i think you could we could do a uh graphic filter on them. Or we do a custom family, maybe. That would be easier. Yeah. Yeah. And then that way we can use them in the vignettes, too. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be like block people or something. Yeah. OK, figure that out. I realize we also need a compost block. <laughs> yeah, we never really got around to that, did we? No, I think we need one. It comes up in several warnings, so we'll have to add that. Is the website live? Yep. Can you post a link to it? Uh, yep. Sweet. It's like work in progress, so. Yeah, no doubt. Let me, um, I think I can just like send it to you on Slack. Yeah, I just published it today to make sure nothing crazy would happen. It's a little bit glitchy, like things kind of adjust and change and a little glitchy, but. Overall, it's been good to use. Let me know if you see anything like weird that's not working or if, so it won't, like if you try to look at it on your phone, it's gonna be a formatting nightmare. It, it doesn't work. Okay. Just don't. It's, it's a whole separate um, like design that you have to do. Um, it doesn't adjust nicely. Okay. So it only works like from a computer. I think if, if the layout was more simple, it might have worked in the phone mode, but we just have so much on there that 
doesn't work. I wonder if there's a way to like turn off the mobile viewing on it. Like, so if anybody did go to it on their phone, they would just kind of see the desktop mode. Uh, Management uh, for that within the website. I should try here. I'll try it on my phone right now. Actually, I haven't tried because now that I published it. Yeah, I don't know if it just like breaks or. It'll probably just show it like it did on the editor, where it's just really wacky. I would think. I'm assuming there's no way to get rid of that top bar. No. Yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to buy the premium. You have to buy it, which I'm sure is a premium. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. All of the free ones have those like ads at the top. It's better than having like a weird ad in the middle of the page. You know. It'd probably would be a bunch of food ads, which would be <laughs> Be really applicable. Yeah. No, it's kind of a mess on your phone. Like, it's all, I don't know if you can see that, but it's all jumbled. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you'd have to, you'd have to reformat everything on the phone version. No, you guys just need to design a mo the mobile app version of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't doesn't show up good on the phone. I don't think there's anything you can do about it. Like other than design it for the for the phone, redo the whole thing. Um, Mike, kind of a side question here, but I was talking to a coworker today about this project. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, I wonder if um, if there's a way to sort of recommend projects to game design students as like." Just, just an idea, you know. Just be like, yeah. Here, this is out there. Like, if you're looking for a project and wanted to take it and run with it or something. Um. The, like, yeah. yeah I don't know if there's absolutely. I think when I first started conceiving of this studio, I was gonna try to team up with the game design, but mm. I, there's just too many things going on. I just felt like, with even my lack of experience regarding like how to program a game, it wouldn't. Have, it would have been asking too much. Yeah. Okay. I sort of wanted to see where the studio goes in terms of, and I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with it because it, it's not like things aren't like overly gamey in the sense that like the game, like, like technical aspects of gaming are not limiting what you guys are able to kind of conceive of, which is sort of, and so like with a game design studio, I don't, I don't know where that could have went, but it could have gone down paths that I wouldn't have been maybe comfortable with. So I kind of wanted to see where this could go first. Um, but absolutely. Yeah. I think, um, next time I teach ADS, I'll pick up basically where you guys left off and perhaps do a, a collaboration with a game design studio or, or, or workshops in some such way. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the way things are turning out. So particularly with your guys' project. So, um, I definitely want to be able to, I want to continue this kind of thinking, uh, moving forward. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, and it, it will be nice to actually give me uh, like just per, like f in terms of moving the studio forward, it, it is a content material that I can share in terms of like, here's what I'm thinking. Otherwise it would have been like, what are you thinking? <laughs> Mr. Architect. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're not comfortable with your whatever ideas. <laughs> yeah. The website will expire. <laughs> Okay. Like, like maybe this is a bad time to, yeah, I don't know if we're going to sign up or not. Uh, how much is it? Oh, I don't think, actually, I think we did figure out it won't expire. I think it was, if oh. you, if you did the trial for like the, like the pro version, you could do a trial and then that one would, would expire. But because we stuck with the free plan, I think we're good. So okay. I lied. Sorry, yeah. I, forgot. I forgot we worked that out. Uh, would, you, would you mind if I posted it to the studio Slack page? Yeah, you can. Okay. Right, or Simon, are you cool with that? No, let's leave it a surprise. I take it back. Oh, well, I, I want to inspire your fellow students. Oh, okay. Are you cool, Simon? Yeah, I don't. I don't think the traffic from the studio is going to crash it. Never know. This could be a viral hit. 
<laughs> We're going to get so many contact Who messages, we're not going to have time to finish the damn project. It's just going to be flooding our inboxes all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa, for a minute there, you, you freaked me out. I thought you found something that said the website. No, yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like if you do, you can you get a 14 day free trial of the prim, uh, premium version, and then I guess you can either go back to the free one or you have to pay. Okay. I don't think. I mean, I guess we'll we'll find out if I'm. Yeah, I guess I'll find out for Access it, and it's like your website expired. Yeah. But I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think the stipulation is just that you have ads and then you have a really weird URL, which has Wix.com in there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, I mean, it seems like you guys, I mean, obviously you guys are in good shape. I don't know if you have any other concerns or questions. I could play around with this all day. <laughs> No, my concerns are with my other coursework. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Mike, uh, another kind of off-topic question here. Yeah, let's shoot. Because um, part of me, like, if if we were to do it again, part of me would have wanted to try and play around with different tech, um, yeah. like different, different software other than Revit. I guess I'm just curious, like, in hindsight, um, I mean, how do you feel? Like, do you, do you wish we had pursued that route as well? Or I think, do you think yeah, the project went in a, a good direction with like, I think to do it again, I, what I would do is I'd have more, I'd have maybe a, like three groups. And so I think I, the way I like group work happening in a studio in the past that, that I feel is really effective is similar to the studio and it grows organically. Um, semi-organically and there's a and there's a kind of feeling out and there's a kind of a matching that makes sense and not that's not contrived or forced but i think uh like an example of what's sort of working with uh trevor and austin is that austin's getting like interested and in, into the unreal studio software mm. not every single student could do that and what you can do I think with a group of three or four students, like three or four students, you know, one or two students can just really focus on testing tools and really pushing that. I feel like that'd be the only way to do it. Otherwise it'd be too overwhelming. You wouldn't be able to think both critically and then through the kind of tech and to be able to learn through the technical issues. Yeah. But I would like to push it more for sure. And I feel like the way to do it is, isn't necessarily to team up with a game studio, which is sort of what I thought. And I think it's more of, groups working together. I'm increasing my own knowledge of these tools. Like I'm learning on real studio actually. And so I'll be more able to effectively, you know, teach it essentially, or like give workshops on it. Um, but I think it's a big enough task that you'd have to organize it around um, groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like scripting. So it, if it was like some kind of like intense parametric project, it's not that different actually. It's just visual, yeah. different visual outputs, but it's all still scripted. Um, yeah. I think you'd have to arrive at the game design much earlier in the semester too. Yeah. Like right. the, yeah. Yeah. To do a, a full working game, but that might be possible. Yeah, part of me still wants to kind of try and just look a little more at Unity because I think that's what they use for Block Hood. Okay, that's what Tom's using Unity, but he's using he's using it as almost as mostly as like a, an image compiler. He's using Unity. Yeah. Oh. And so he's like he's rendering in this other software that he's used before. That's like um, it's mainly used to like design like like image at, or not image assets, it's like content, object content. And then I think he's rendering in that software and then he's basically putting the, the images together in Unity and it's like, it's programmed. So like you, you select a, a choice and an image comes up essentially. Gotcha. Um, yeah, cause he was using that one, like it was like a very pixelated. Yeah. Uh, I forget the name of the program, but it seemed pretty intuitive. Yeah, that actually looked pretty easy. 
he, what he's doing in Unity looks actually pretty difficult. Okay. <laughs> he was showing me yesterday. He was just showing me like the, you know, he had like the live screen and then the coding screen. He was running through the script. And I was like, I don't even know what computer language that or what scripting language that is. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, he actually wanted to make uh, like a game you could play. He's doing it. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. I'm super excited. It's really simple, but it's yeah. totally worth the effort. Yeah, uh, that's kind of that's kind of what I feel. It's like simplicity allows you the the I guess time to then invest more in the the yeah technology side of it, and then like complexity doesn't. You just have to kind of work with what you know. I think well, you, you have to, I think you sort of need to like pick. You need to design the, the um, pick what you can prototype. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want the simplicity. That, that was my other concern is that the, like, the ability to kind of execute something limits how you think of the game itself or the process or even how you think of participation. And so you may have to just like select a piece that you can prototype, sort of like a building detail that you would develop more in depth. Um, he's sort of doing that, but it, he's trying to take it all on. So we'll sort of see <laughs> where it goes. Um, yeah. I think the other thing is the thing that this this generally the I teach ID five too, and the, the way I like to teach it is that it's like it's based off of research that's embedded in the real world in some way, and so it always sort of also takes a lot of time to transition from doing that research in the kind of quote real world into like design work. Yeah, that's the other thing that slows the studio. I always like it a lot. I always feel like it's very meaningful and valuable. That's sort of the other half of the studio. It's not just straight game design. It's like you're doing research as architects ab about, that's about being embedded into the real world, so to speak, and draw lessons through an understanding of, you know, social spatial constraints and how, under, you know, how kind of social relationships and spatial relationships are intertwined. So like the, that whole piece, that's a big piece of the studio. So I think I would also have to perhaps it makes sense to rethink that a bit to get students quicker into the conception of what a game is. So that, like you said, Alyssa, that they arrive at the game sooner because they would sort of need to by like mid midterm mm -hmm. and then spend the second half of the semester working through the, like the, just the complexity of the, I'll call it game system that they develop. Yeah, I'm wondering if one and two could be folded together because I started with um, gig economy in one and then I transferred over to food in two. So yeah. really, I, I started this like from two forward. So right. uh, if if I could take that one time back and tack it on to the end of this, then that would give more time for like um, actual game prototyping, especially if you had a bigger group too. Yeah, yeah I think, I mean, the one, the one thought I had was that if it was just one topic, yeah. It would allow people to move faster. And then they would kind of, they would divert a bit in how they research it, but then I could bring them together because then they, there would most certainly be common interest amongst the entire studio within that one topic. So if it was all about food security, like the whole studio is doing food insecurity, but they did it through the kind of similar structure, it would be easier to get them, get a studio in the spot where they're thinking about the idea of games, and then even also to organize them into a series of groups more quicker and more effectively. So I think that I've sort of leaned towards that as the route. Like there would be a specific topic focus, and you would we just jump into it sooner, um, and then groups could emerge even more organically through the semester based off that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, I appreciate your guys' work and thoughts. Um, good luck, and uh, I'll see you guys Monday. That's cool. Cool. Is Monday, um, what's the time slot again? Cause the, uh, Four to 9.30. OK. Because initially, yeah, you had said there were like two time slots, and the critics were being ranked by when their availability was for like yeah. four to six thirty and six thirty to nine. But it's uh, just four to six thirty and seven to nine thirty. Oh okay, right.
But the whole class is there from seven till the end. The whole class is there from four to nine, theory. I'm sorry, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I won't show up at seven, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Students gotta do double time. That'll work out good. We'll get to see everyone's work. Yeah. I haven't um, developed an order yet. Would you guys be opposed to going early? That would be okay. Are How you early are we talking? Like first or second? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. I think I it just you guys have a very clearly articulated and developed project. So like I sort of this is also the sort of studio there's not building, so like the jurors are my colleagues and they, they sort of know what's up. Some of them were in the review last time, but not all of them. And so it, it started, it, it's beneficial to the entire studio when you start off with like a, a clearly defined project, particularly when it's, when it's about research and it's about some other kind of design objective other than making a building. Cause then the jurors are like, how do I, you know, obviously I'll, I'll communicate with them and like talk about what my expectations for the review are with them. But still, like, there's still sometimes like this, like, how do I review this project, kind of? Yeah. So, sort of challenging. And, yeah, and you guys will have more time, too, because there's two of you. So, mm -hmm. sort of benefits, like, there'll be more time that can warm up to what you guys are up to. But, I don't know. I haven't fully thought it through, so I just wanted to ask you guys that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And just really quickly to your point of uh, we're not doing a building. The reason that I was talking to my coworker about this today was because as I was leaving the office at midday, he said, so when you guys are doing these projects for school, are you putting chases in your buildings? And I was like, oh boy, <laughs> we're not even doing a building. We're designing a game. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had like a 20 minute conversation about it, so. <laughs> Did they walk, did this individual walk away shaking their head or did they walk away from it? No, like, at first he was like, what are you talking about? And then I think uh, at the end, uh, he was like, well, that's actually kind of interesting. I don't know if he is totally on board with, um, I mean, he's, a, he's one of the mechanical engineers. Uh, so I don't know if he's on board with. It's a mechanical system. How do, like, <laughs> the same thing, inputs, outputs, outcomes, effects, equilibrium, balance. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know if he sees it a hundred percent as architecture. Like I remember one of my other coworkers I was talking to about um, the food research I was doing earlier in the semester. And she was like, how does that relate? And I was like, it's about building empathy and like understanding these systems so that when you design in the future, you have some of that understanding. And like, there are ways that the built environment interacts with these systems. Um, so once I kind of, once you kind of explain it a little bit, people understand it a little more. Yeah. But right yeah. from the get go, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, what's so challenging is that practice, I mean, practice, like professional practice of architecture puts such like clear brackets on like what you do. And it's sort of because of the, the kind of business model, a lot of things that it's just like, you only ever see just the projects you work on and like mm -hmm. that's the scope of how you conceive of the profession. And like, so like, that is uh, sort of frustrating. <laughs> um, and also, I mean, it, it, it's, it's sort of, I mean, obviously it's super limiting and, and it's not like these things are that far outside the bounds of like what you would do in a project. Mm -hmm. um, but like the kind of, I'd say like the, the knowledge and the skills learned here are like they underlie how you think about uh, the work you do and it may not be explicit in the projects. Um, so I will say that like all the things you're doing now, even in, in a, even in a super practical way, it's like those are, the kind of skills and the kind of the way you're framing the work is helpful even when you talk to people about what architecture can be and by people I mean like clients 
I like when you're able to say architecture is not a building, but it's a it's a way to solve your problems. Like that's 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 how you win work. I mean, that's super practical. Yeah. And so like the things that I teach in studio are not things that are divorced from how I practice. And a lot of the work I've done, not so much anymore, but when I first started in various firms, a lot of the work I did was about winning work and like kind of going after competitions and like going after RFPs and doing interviews. And it was always like, I got really good at it because I structured it in this way. It was never like, here's your rendering of your building, but here's like how we're going to solve your problems. And we're not even looking at architecture. Yeah, we'll get to that. But like, here's how we structure a process that leads to that. And like that. So like, it's not when you're able to do that, that's super empowering for you because then people suddenly understand that it's not just about a style of a building that you select, but it's about how space can be a way to uncover and uh, address people's needs. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. All right, I'll see you guys. I recorded this, so I'll upload it too, for whatever reason. All right. I don't know if you guys awesome. are watching videos, but yeah, that's cool. All right. We'll All right. You. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, yes. no problem. See ya. See ya. Yeah. Hi, hey, Mike. Hey, Maude. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good. All right, Mike. Um, so basically, um, I'll be talking about like uh, the three main, uh, you know, um, deliverables, which is the sure. prototype and then the trailer. So let me start with the prototype first, or the atlas, actually. So that's what I envisioned so far. So talking about my thesis statement, the gig economy introduction, and then the American dream, um, which is like the, um, the timeline, you know, from the 1900s to all the way. Yeah, yeah. And then talk about also lock it. the game scenarios, which we're going to have um, the existing neighborhood, and this is how it looks like right now and what, how we can like improve it. And these are the scenarios. This is the live, negotiate, and then share. These are the three steps we have to go by. Okay. Yeah, so live in the neighborhood, negotiate with other um, neighbors, and then share the environment with them. So these are the claim with the cards as we um, talked and the upcoming crises, the sharing activities, and then the new environment would be. So this is my game, uh, let's see if I bust. <laughs> That's my cash cab. So this is what we talked about before. Um, I did this one, but I'll be showing it in the trailer. Um, the game, I played it with one, one of the writers. You did, okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll do a few more, probably by Saturday or something. Or hopefully. Sure, yeah. yeah. I'll see. Um, yeah, this is again my, uh, the existing neighborhood that looks like and then close shot on one of the houses and see how it looks like floor plan. You have all these like living um, bedroom, you have like the kitchenette, you have the bathrooms and stuff and how we can like free up spaces as we can talk like in the, the I mean down here. So that's the neighborhood, lift, negotiate. I was thinking about like live, engage, share or live, negotiate, share or I was thinking like too many things. There. Okay, so, yeah, we can come back to that. Yeah. So then uh, this is the analysis. How did I make it here? What's so wrong with the American dream? Oversized lots, improper use of residential space, huge McMansion in some areas, um, poor mass void um, design, um, lack of community interaction. So gig um, economy, shared economy, and then shared community, it turns out to be. So each has like a little paragraph explains what's what. Um, the steps probably I gotta be like more um, comprehensive on it. I probably like have like each step on one page, maybe. I'm not sure about that yet. 
because this kind of overlap with with this. So this is like how you play the game, like physically, you pick up the uh, envelope and then you um, share the card. And I got my, I got my, uh, got my envelope here. This is the game, I just wanna show you that. There we go. Yeah, so that was, anyway, just disappear for now. I'll find it. So that was my Atlas uh, um, mic, so far, I mean. All right, hang on, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sure. All right, here we go, cool. Yeah. Uh... <clears throat> so are you going to, I think it'd be nice if it was structured the same way that you, uh, the previous atlas that was like an atlas that unfolded. Yeah. Were you planning on doing that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so this one. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll have like similar concept, like you can fold it. I like that. I, I, I mean, I really like the first page you had too to talk about that yes which kind of what i have here okay yeah i wasn't yeah you do okay cool i just want to yeah. i really like your atlas so i just want to i think it's worth continuing it oh so you think i can add to that or uh no i i, I think there's maybe there's there might be a few other pieces you could pull out of this out of the old atlas let me maybe i'll yeah 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 I just want to be clear, like which one to take out, which one is like not so sure. relevant, you know? Okay, I'm gonna take control. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yep. Go ahead. What is that one there? Oh, sorry. It's a PDF, right? Oh, yeah. You gotta hit control on them, zoom in and out. <laughs> yeah. It's not let me zoom in. Yeah. Uh I can go a mural if you want. I have also on a mural, I think. No, this is okay. I mean, I think like this was a good one. And maybe this was updated a little bit. Okay. To reflect the game piece. Um, the dream, of course, right? The dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But this one, the spatial analysis, I think, uh, I don't know. That, I mean, analyze the space or like the city. Um, the spatial analysis of it. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, there's something interesting about like, I mean, the, the, what you're doing is you're looking at kind of the suburban landscape. So you're trying to sample across the suburban landscape. Right, right. I think that's sort of, a, I sort of like that one. Yep. Okay. Um, Social, economic, and political constraints. I feel like this is a good one too. This, okay, got it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm able to pan. I don't know what's going on. Can you go to yeah. left? <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I can have like a mural version of this. And this is like kind of difficult for you. It is kind of probably. To All right. yeah. Can you, yeah, just open the mural version. Yeah, it was that. It was that. Yep. Um, do you want to exit? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, I will zoom up. I thought I had it somewhere. That's four four, but that's not the. No, that's my individual meeting. Probably it won't. Ah. Uh, 
Yeah, it looks like I don't have it. Oh, because we submitted it as a PDF, I think, on Google Drive. We did not submit it as a uh, an immutable. Right. That's why. But anyway. Well, I actually, I mean, I have yeah. it. Let me just grab it. It's right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think the social, economic, and political constraints is good. I think. I think the spatial analysis is good. We talked about that. Sure. Um, I like the active form. I like all the active form drawings. Right. I think those are nice. Yeah, the courtyard concept and all these. Um... Uh, oh, I meant the, uh, I didn't even get to those yet. Okay. I meant the first two active forms. The one that the uh, multipliers and the switch remote. Oh, I see. Multiplier, switch remote. Oh. It's it just, it's more of like, you don't need to specifically talk about it, but it, I, I like it as analysis and how you're yeah, thinking. Yeah, 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 I'll do it. So the active forms for the um, multiplier, um, wiring topology, and then yeah. the, governor, the governor, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's nice. How about the response, uh, uh, Mike? I think the responses are good too. I mean, my yeah. only concern was would be that it gets, I think it's good. My only concern would be that it gets confused with the direction that you're going in. Not that it's that different. Yeah, we can show like, this is the way I started it. And then this is the way I ended up doing it. So that was like the inspiration that I took in order like to make it. Well, I'm gonna still, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this, this version with me. Oh, okay. And so maybe you can get, I would, I would leave it out. I think it's good, but I'd leave it out because I don't want them to get confused. And I'm gonna, I mean, to start off the reviews, I'm kind of gonna go over all the Project 2 atlases, and I'll definitely show yours and talk about it as like all the research that you did really briefly. So there'll, there'll be familiarity with what the direction you're going in, and you'll be even able to refer to it in the review if it makes sense. You'll have a lot to talk about. I just don't want them to get confused. I think yeah. that's good. So, so what is it, Mike? Um, so which one we took out? We only ones I add, it was just only active form ones I would suggest would be the multiplier, switch remote, wiring, topology, and interplay governor. Not the actual responses. Okay, There's the last your, thing, yeah. Because the your actual thing. active form responses in your project now, and it's evolved from this, it would just be confusing to see this. Okay, okay. How about like the courtyard concept, the, the two pages? I will leave it out. Okay. Because okay. it's in your project now. Right, right. All right. Good. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, I think the Alice is going to be great. All right, Mike, so probably like from here, um, all this like probably could be like um, take part, like all these like analysis and stuff, um, the Uber thing, um, the sign, I don't know about the Uber sign up process. I, I wouldn't, no, I'll get rid of all of that. You don't need okay. any of that. Yeah. Okay. The Uber riders' favorite destinations. I don't think you need that either. Yeah. The comparison, I don't think also a comparison between the driver and taxi. You don't need that either. Yeah. Okay, so for, but these I think should be because these are the users. Yeah, that's um, good. That's yeah, good. It's fine. This is yeah. the. Okay. I don't think you need that. Yeah. So anything about this, specifically about the Uber experience will be taken out. Yeah, correct. Yeah, pretty much. This will include, of course, because this tells story. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what. Yep. That one's not bad. I kind of like I I like the timeline at the bottom too. 
Oh yeah, that's my experience. Yeah, my experience timeline. What I do every day, you know, stuff. Yeah. yeah, immersive experience. All right, that sounds cool. Um, all right, we got this. No, not this. I think this one does not work. Um, talks about well, it's American Dream, but talks about um, past, present, and then future. I think it's good. Yeah, I think I like with that. All right. Um, I think we covered all of it, right? Yep. Um, what is that? Okay, that's my problem with current. Okay, that's my neighborhood problems. Oh yeah, I'll include that maybe. All right, Mike. So that was my atlas. Um, so let's go back to humans. Let's do murals here, and then we jump into the uh, the second one. So Mike, um, is the intention like to um, present all these like like three different del deliverables, right? The atlas, yeah. the prototype, yeah. and the trailer. Pretty much. So we'll yeah. Separate piece, each one a separate piece. Yeah. Okay. So the prototype. So what I talked about first is my, um, like what is the mean I'm doing like my game with? So it's the Uber. So me like cash Uber. So this is me, I'm um, engaging, <laughs> engaging the public. And then this, these are my feedback I got from the, um, the people or the riders. And this is my, the Uber setup. So I have a camera here. I have, this is driver, actually, this is the, the map I have on the ceiling. Um, awesome. is, what is it? This is awesome, this is oh, great. Yeah. yeah, this is my Uber app, this is my riders sitting here. This is my, the, the, the prize or the cash, five bucks. What are we <laughs> this is a question. I really wish the prize was something less like, I mean, I think it's funny that it's cash, but I, I wish it was like uh, something a little maybe smarter. Okay. Like, like I read it. I don't know what it is, but it's like a, I, I think a reward of some kind. I don't like. Yeah. Like if not cash, what would be, um, I mean, like I wish there was a way to tie it into the game. And so like, so are they, what, I mean, I'm assuming this is, this is about playing the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So every time they, they move forward in a step and then successfully negotiate, they get a prize. So they receive points maybe. Yeah. Like I, it could okay. be like mod cash or gig economy cash. Like what's gig economy? Like it could be like, I mean, hypothetically it could be like Bitcoin. So I'm, th I'm trying to think of things that are like, yeah. Related to the gig economy. Yeah. And almost like fictional currencies. Like you could make Malad coin or <laughs> you know how like people like you, you've heard of like Dogecoin or like the like the thousand invented cyber currencies. Yeah, not too familiar with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can Google it. I mean, doesn't that I mean I mean, yeah, you yeah. I would think about what, what that, it could be just points in the game in some way. So not to pay cash or any. Yeah. All right. Cash seems too old school, right? Like it's almost like it's the gig economy. So I don't know what you get in the gig economy. You get some like stupid points or something, you know, like all the apps that use points systems. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean you do, but yeah, you get paid, you know, not cash, but you get points and uh, rating also and all these things. Um, so, um, okay. And I, only mean, I mean, just think about it hypothetically. You don't have to actually implement it, but I would think of like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what the equivalent online you know, bonus points are, but all the apps, particularly like the food apps that have like point systems. Yeah, I can do it by points. And like if a person like reach a point, like let's say like each one is like a, each step like as a point and then five, Points like the fifth step. Yeah. What do you get out of that once you like you reach the five points as a rider? What is your prize? What is your? Um... Well, here's the thing. It doesn't like. Um, this yeah. is what I sort of like too. And this makes it easier for you. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know what Reddit is? Yeah. The website Reddit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You get points on Reddit, right? Yeah. Karma. It has mm -hmm. no purpose, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> it could be just karma. 
just like Reddit, right? And so like part of it, what what is interesting or funny and sort of like speaks to symbolically the gig economy, it's like it's empty. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just the idea of getting, achieving something. Okay. But that actually works for Reddit. Like people upload stuff and people go after participating because they want to have the most points. Okay. All right, so you just try to get, I mean, reach the points and then there is nothing out of it. Yeah, I mean, I would call it like karma. That's what the Reddit score is. Yeah, the karma credit or yeah. karma points. points. Okay, so probably like each step, uh, each scenario, like um, the, um, the writer like will select his route or her route, will get a point yeah. for you. And then has to justify it by like giving a good explanation why she or he selected that route, I think. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, this is from the old atlas. Um, this is the, um, each of the writers, what he or she said about the single family houses, the self-driving cars, the technology access, and uh, single um, personal experience and stuff like that. So these are like multiple opinion and then feedback from the writers. Um, this is kind of like analysis um, about the speciality these are the cards themselves. This is the, um, the scenarios. These are scenarios, the four scenarios here we have. So this is part of the game prototype would be. Um, so I'll be doing like neighborhood number one or like, like um, intervention maybe number one and yeah. then yeah. number two. Okay. Yeah. So that's the existing neighborhood. That's the houses at alarm or like the one like a, that are like a glowing, which means yeah. like high crises or like crisis in it. So this one has a crisis for the, um, has a crisis for the um, cannot afford mortgage. This is daycare. These are the homeschooling or the vacant house. And this is for the um, elderly couple. So each one has like alarming, that means has a problem and needs to be fixed. And this is my, um, these are my, as I showed you before, my negotiation among the neighborhood and phase yeah. one and phase two and phase three. So we'll do a different setup or negotiation for the other phases based on the writer's feedback, which already I got like a few of them so far. Okay. So, and then the phases and then how the neighborhood would look like in the future. So that's my neighborhood one, neighborhood two will be a different version. But- sure. yeah, it makes sense. So that's the prototype. I don't know, um, I was doing this mic and then some of the slides could overlap between the two, between that. That's fine, don't worry about that. I guess, are you gonna print the prototype or how does it, what's it like as a? I was thinking as a, um, like a PDF or could be printed as a Atlas. Well, how do people play it? How, do, how are people playing it? Okay, um, I already did it. Yeah, right. So you see this, I already played it with a few people. So Milad Cash Cab here. You that's, your, that's your prototype right there. Yeah, this is it. So my envelope here, and I have the cards. Okay. And this one will be pulled and then select the route based on that. That's great. So, so I mean, you should just have that for. <laughs> oh, the envelope itself. Yeah. The that's your box. prototype. Yeah, the firebox. I did it. So that's what I paid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did a few times. I don't want to show it to you. I want to show it to you on Monday, so you see the trailer. One time. <laughs> um, yeah. So these are the things. Um, yeah, that was that was the one here. So each one select like, you see like select like the routes scratch. Yeah. So that was it. But I'll show you the video with the person. That's great. So you should bring those. Those are people's actual responses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, that's great. The drafts, you mean? What am I looking at this image? Oh, you see like these um the, the cards and then it's selected, you see it, like scratched? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah. yeah, bring that bring those. Yeah. Okay. So that's your prototype. Your prototype's done. That's what I was asking. Oh, okay. So it's not only like, like um, it's like an envelope and then the four cards. That's there. great. Yeah, I just want to know how people play it. Okay, I see. I see. Right, and like I how they play, play it as the prototype because that's I want to know what people are interacting with. Like, what is that experience for the? And like, it'd be nice if you actually could hand those out during the review. That's what I'm planning to do. Okay, great. Yeah, and I print them probably on like um, thicker paper, not like this. Sure. Yeah, yeah, like, that'd be nice. Like a card, you know, glossy, maybe glossy yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, so, um, okay, Mike. So, so probably then the prototype is only the scenarios and then the game. Sure, it can be really simple, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you'll show us the outcome, but the prototype is just the cards and how people play it. 
Okay. So all the like introduction of the like the platform, the engaging platform. That's a, yeah, sure. I don't include that too. Okay, but not an envelope, of course, would be like in the research and the sure. like PDF. Sure. Okay. I thought like this would be would be like going on the Atlas, but then I said, well, this is part of the game prototype because it's the engaging platform. So I was like debating between whatever. Yeah, I mean, whatever you, it's okay if it's redundant. Whatever you think yeah. people need to play the game. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking probably about more on my, I don't know, like the envelope and then the four cards in it. I was thinking about like something to introduce. I mean, I can introduce it in the Atlas, but I want something like in the prototype section. If there's something to be introduced or you think narrowly or. Wait, what do you, what do you mean? Well, if you have like the, um, the envelope and then you have the four cards in it, like yeah. four, right? And I mean, you said like, is this like, this is it? Or it needs to be like something to be like introduction for the prototype. Not the Atlas, the Atlas were done with it, but the prototype itself. Like, um, probably I was doing some of it here. Like live, negotiate, share, and have neighborhood and stuff. Probably this one could move to the prototype. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, some of these could. Yeah, this one probably. Imagine your recession and then pick a scenario. Yeah, this would go there. And rethink neighborhood and explore more scenarios and, yeah. But the actual game is like the four cards, yeah, as we say, as we said, and then the envelope itself. Yeah, correct. And these results will not be on the, on Monday, right? I'm not gonna show these results. These are gonna be probably part of the research, but not in the envelope. Uh, or could yeah. be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. 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 Um, the trailer might like, um here. So. I did a sketch, how to approach it. And so this is it, the trailer. So basically introduction about the gig economy when I like to riders and then drop them off in destinations and then all these like five, six categories I did, I'll do like very brief. And yeah. like for like residential area, like for retail area, I want like all these things. So that like, could be one. You mean the, the, first, the first part of the assignment when you did the... Um, it's the research that you one. did? Part yeah. two, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 you're talking about the library one and then the other yeah. two. Yeah. Do I have to include that? that, that the, you don't have to, but I think you could. As an introduction for my trailer? Sure. Okay. The, you're talking about the, the library and the um, other two things that we Correct. want. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I use the bike and stuff. <laughs> um, okay. So then the Uber, um, the Uber, which I have experienced like in the project one. Number two, like very brief, not the reg registration or like the sign up process or all these things, not only like the yeah. speciality experience with the writers. Um, analysis about the dream and then the urban sprawl and then look up precedents. So the common hood here was so relevant. That was, I was telling you yesterday. Um, I hope I talk about like the recession and then share economy or share like the factory um, among the residents. So I don't know if that would go here. I was thinking about also would go on the at my atlas. I think yeah, it could go on the atlas. So, I mean, be careful about the video length. Like the video is going to be. Um, okay. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, probably I'll take this one out there. But I, yeah. The shared play. Um, so the shared economy, um, shared neighborhood. Re envision and introducing the game. Set up the game cards. I'll show the envelope on the cards. Yeah, yeah. And then Uber. That's good. And, and I then, got it. Yep. So writer number one, writer number two. Yeah. Writer number one will do, I'll introduce the game. So I'll show the, um, how I talk to him and, or her, and then negotiate the variables with them, and then tell them like, to select their scenarios route. And based on that, I'll be sketching my neighborhood and how it's gonna look like. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, uh, repeat the same thing with the writer number two, and then conclusion, and then lessons learned. And here, um, playing the game is in real life. So this is my like main video with the writer will be um, participatory design or Uber riders. And then how like my neighborhood will be sketched. And then probably if I can like walk it through my neighborhood as, as we talked about here, like, you know, no, like it's not animation, but like you walk through, you know, you walk sure. through, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do like something like this, few shots, like, you know, you rotate and, you know, see things and 
So that would be, so that would be my, tra my game trailer. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so no comments on it? Looks no, great. My comments are just, I mean, be concise. Yeah. Don't try to overload it. I mean, all the information is there. It makes sense. I think the steps are good. Um, you can, I mean, err on the side of making the video clearer. And if you need to explain something, you can explain it in person instead of trying to pack it into a video that's supposed to be two minutes long. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> like all the case study stuff you can just share either through your game atlas or some other means. Yeah, I'll do it the atlas. I think. Yeah, most likely it'll be at the atlas. Yeah. But the share play, um, I'll be like showing these like neighborhoods as we talked and then have like, um, you know, the existing and then the existing here and then it pops up, you know, the second version, the third, yeah. version, fourth, fifth and sixth. That would be also in the, um, in the trailer for like 10 seconds or like 12 seconds, whatever it is. Sure, Which, I think that's good. Yeah, so that also would be. Um, Mike, about clarity, I think now it's clear. The atlas, the prototype, how did I like make it here based on my atlas? Yeah. And the trailer is based on my prototype, which is the game. Sure. No, that's clear. That's clear enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mike, for that week between the Monday and then the May 6th, um, are we expecting to do any iterations? I, I'm expecting to do so, right? Like change uh, modifications? It's up to you. It'll be up to you guys. So, I mean, the grade will be, the grading will be on Monday or will be on the May 6th? It'll be on May 6th. May 6th, okay, I see. Yeah. I see. Um, anything you want to say, Mike, about what to focus my time on? I mean, uh, yeah. no, just, just, re just rely on, you know, the work you've done. Don't try to reinvent anything, make it clear. If anything, simplify things. Um, and I sort of like, uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's good. I'd print it black and white again. I like the black and white. Oh, black and white you want to be? Yeah. Uh, that's what I did last time. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. Um, black and white here, but how about these scenarios? Gotta be color. Color would be good there. That's the one spot that color is nice. Okay. With a scenario, that's fine. Let's look at so, so, so the prototype that I'm gonna bring in on Monday is not gonna be exactly the prototype will be on the PDF. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah, I mean, it can evolve. Yeah. Um. So, Mike, this is why I took it out from my. You know, um, these will not be included. Maybe that was like the um final look of the neighborhood, but which were here. Snatch one up a second. Probably the mural board is like, yeah. You killed mural, yeah. <laughs> it's maxed out maybe, and then it cannot, yeah. <laughs> cannot load anything. Um, well, it's not gonna be there. It's gonna be like the version that I'll be like um, doing, yeah. and then with some notes on it. And then I don't know if you wanna see it like colored or you wanna see it like a, a sketchy uh, as, as this as this style like this style or like the that uh, i don't know i mean it could be done either way this is like an old version of what i experienced but this is the most yeah. you know. i mean i guess it maybe it's a hybrid that it's it's both there's some line work but then there's some color to indicate maybe what the interventions are. And so the existing houses maybe are all line work. All the existing stuff is line work. And then you just see what you're intervening as color. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking about the way, um, okay, that's fine. I can make it like, um, like transparent maybe, or like light color or something yeah the reason i'm saying it's a little heavy like this that. one's heavy yeah, yeah a, so just light it up what do you mean like the background the background here or even the like overall the overall thing the overall drawing yeah. 
Yeah. Well, this is like too heavy and this is like too light. Should, yeah, right. That's yeah. what I mean, right? I agree. Okay. I see. I see what I'm saying. Um, the reason why I said that because, well, this is going to look like this. But like in a 3D look. So the houses could remain. I'm coloring yeah. the houses, the one has the crises. So I'm coloring it. So That's like, nice. Yeah, I think a 3D version of that would be really nice. Oh, okay. Like this one, that like this kind of, that kind of level of intensity. This one, you mean? Correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. Because like this one, this house I left it like empty, no color sure. code. Yeah. It has a need, but this one has a crisis, so it's like color coded. So and these kind of things. Um, okay. So okay, Mike. So it'll be like second version of this. How's it gonna look like? Um. I don't know about the, I wanna, okay, I want to ask you about one more thing about the graphics. Um, like the sheet titles maybe, or something, any comments on these? Probably these got to be unified. Yeah, I would say make it consistent. Yeah, do you like any frame on the, like, or like um, on the page? Like a, a line on top, a line on the, on the side? No, maybe? I wouldn't add any more graphic information. I would make things more consistent. So the timeline, you probably, I mean, I don't know if it needs to say timeline on every page, but the header should be a similar size on each one. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Or the same size on each one. Yeah. So Mike, I also like be adding more sheets like this to explain things as I did here, like let engage share or how to like, um, what is the vision as like um, the crises, activities, and environment, just like that's more about um, the, the issue. And then how do we like, um, how do we like make it here for the protest? How do we make it like the game? So like this is your existing neighborhood. This is your American dream. Um, so what's wrong with it? So we can talk about it. That was one thing. Also, I was thinking about something else yesterday for that. I have it written maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, just talks about the story, like entering the new paradigm, sharing our economic paradigm, and then caused by economic recession, and then this is your dream right now, and then what's the problem with it? So, like introduction to the um, the problem, and then these are the scenarios. Might yeah, probably like some of the sheets might like shift a little bit. I might do that also. Okay. Not sure about that yet. Okay. Um, that was one thing. Here's this. Uh, Mike, also, um, can I be like on the second on on Monday? Not not like from two to four, like from but from seven to nine. If you don't mind. Uh, I if think you don't so. mind. Yeah. Okay. I mean, on the second. Uh, why? Why do you want to be in the second group? I'm always the last. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's fine. Doesn't matter. But... Yeah. I think my maybe one last comment would be go back up to the Atlas. It's almost like I sort of feel like in every square, there's probably, there's almost like a little, there's, well, there's too much information. And it's, it's so packed. Oh, I have control. Yeah, go ahead. Um, like, you probably could delete this. And I think with this, this, and this, that probably would work better. Uh, so what would go there, Mike, if I Nothing, just white space. I think you, white space, let white space be your friend. It allows the overall, the whole thing to breathe more. Okay. It's so jammed with like, every corner is packed with information. <laughs> right. Oh, just clean it up a little bit. Okay, make it like more. Um, okay, have some white. So we'll do that. I was thinking about like also, um, yeah, yeah. You were thinking about what? No, um, it's like many things, you know, like from like a sticky notes on my Uber, 
or like having like a page say like i would like my neighborhood to look like or like i want to see void or like blank in my neighborhood so like the writers will like write down what their response beside the cars that i can give them so sure. you, you know like i would like my neighborhood to have blank so some kind of like engaging um like uh you know like notes and notepads whatever you want to call it like uh like this like small note uh, tags or whatever you want to call it i put in my uber and then put your like um reaction or like put your like what do you want to see in your neighborhood what's your missing and stuff like that i don't think you need that it just sounds confusing i understand what you're saying the, the sticky notes you know all these things probably yeah, i don't know what you're saying i would just I would keep it, stick with what, the direction you're going. It seems like you're adding something that's unnecessary. Okay, okay. Okay, I think it's good. Yeah. All right, so. Okay. Um, one last thing, Mike. Um, no mind. Um, so, on my first atlas, I concentrate on the courtyard concept here. Like, yeah. for instance, I have like this. Uh, what is it? At? Here, I have like this. Uh, this rendering, right? So, I want to do like one um, iteration, like probably neighborhood number two, maybe. Would have like, let's say, this is the existing. Like some of these, um, like units will be built here. So by the house, this is a house, and then probably the third house and fourth house will be like facing these. So kind of like it creates um, a courtyard within the four houses here. Not this version, but different version. I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. So like kind of creates that concept, but like different. I mean, different version of that. Where is it? Here. Okay. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, like the, 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 the courtyard concept. Sure. I mean, here, it appears here, but I want to do like more like a residential version of it. This is like more mixed residential and then like amenities, like shops or like a kitchenette, laundry shared or all these things. They care. So it's like kind of mixed between residential and not residential. So, and also I got to concentrate on my like uh, ren renderings, you know, <laughs> as we I got to do like uh, multiple renderings for each of the scenarios. I was going to look like outdoor renderings or could be like indoor also. Um, that was, I was looking also like at the daycare inside out, how it looks like. I gotta select this. So that's my daycare. And this is like the outside version of it. I have like some um, chuck boards there. Sure. This is here, futuristics. I don't know what you call it, you know, futuristics or something else. I yeah. Think. yeah. I want to call something. So this like will be like these are people will be sitting outside like colorful seat for kids and stuff will be and this house will be like turned into like a mural wall, stuff like that. Like I'll be like more detailed. I'll have time. There was like some details about like how it's gonna look like um, yeah. from the inside to the outside. I uh, like that. I like I like these items more than I liked. Like these feel like they're getting they're they're designing into the neighborhood in a way that their concepts versus kind of just items you're throwing out at the landscape. So I sort of like that. Oh, okay. How yeah. you're thinking of that. I love this. I want to get more into this. Okay. Like the renderings and then for each scenario, how it's going to look like. So you can, I mean, this is like very, very nice. You know, I see like the inside and you have like sure. a light door and then you go outside. It's kind of like, um, it's not enclosed, but it's like contained. The space is contained by the house here and you have kind of like a mural board or like a yeah. mural wall ready for you just to put your chalkboards and you know stuff like that and it's like turned into a classroom you know by itself by the space that was created sure. by this yeah. and then probably i put like some sort of like um a couple of trees probably or like a, it's not a gate i don't want to put a gate um to the neighborhood i was thinking about that probably a walkway a shaded walkway maybe or something with landscape on both sides maybe yeah, I figure like you would like this a lot, um, like this version of, of things, you know. Uh, probably I'll do like one for the shared offices. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Yeah, yeah and the other, um, what is it? The other couple I did one and then. Um, okay, Mike, so that would do it for this. Um, last thing, um, I have four scenarios so far. 
Do I have to add more? I was planning back to no, add. Two. No, don't add more. No. Okay. okay. That would be too much. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I captured like the most of it. Um, so it should be fine, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right, Mike. Um, Yeah, I had my angle up here. Oh, so Mike, um, for my atlas, you want me to print it on Monday? For Monday? Uh, yes, absolutely. So atlas will be printed and then folded, of course. Yeah. Protab will be put in the um the envelope and then the cards, and this will be the video itself. That's it. It's fine. The expand this course the thousand word. E, do you want it also for Monday or? No, it's fine. For for the May sixth. For okay. May sixth, yep. Okay. All right. Um, Mike, um, can we talk on something before Safi? Safi, right? You have right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yesterday, video visualization. Yeah, I got this yesterday from you about the visualization. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's beautiful also. Um, I like this one. Kind of like white background stuff. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm getting at. Like, let the color be the intervention. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like that one's like that lighter end. That's cool. Yeah, I like the life of the the space is is dominating what's going on. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's like more color. This is like more. Um, this is probably like a, a tool he or she like um did right. Yeah, a tool to do the um. Yeah, yeah. Furniture. Okay, furniture components. Right. Yeah, yeah, I like these. Um. Yeah. But we doing like more outdoor rendering than like indoor renderings. I think this is a kind of indoor, right? Looks like yeah, but it's like it's it doesn't need to read like you don't have to grass doesn't need to be grass. Like you know, the sky doesn't need to be sky. You can it can be oh. you can read as a diagram, and like it can still be this. It, this literally could be outside, where the pieces that you're making are the color, and then you know the ground is white when it's not when it's not a ground that you're inserting. So I think where it's, where you have the play structure and like the outdoor, I think the way you have it set up is good. Okay. But I think where that, like the, the dark gray, that could be white and all this other gray could all be white. It's Which is the, the, the existing. Yeah, correct. Okay. So you, just, you just highlight the things that you're intervening with. Okay. All right, so all these houses will be turned into like light gray, I guess, because I yeah, have that's like great. I would keep it simple like that, and let the like the futuristic daycare and the chalkboard, that kind of layer of detail, let let that be the thing that you folk like. You just visually you see. Yeah, I see. So I gotta swap it. Make this one light. Make this one dark. Or yeah. make this one like whitish, whitish. It's just more detail. So you maybe you see like actual text on these things, or you just cut out images that you'd see. And the text like is representative of the content that you can see. Okay. But, um, it can be abstract. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be realistic. Like it can be just literally images of okay. information and what kid, kids are learning. Yeah. So you see that kind of juxtaposed with like the white would be an effective visualization. Okay. And the text might mean like. Uh, on a like 3D or like probably like annotation. Once I done with the rendering, I do like some annotation on it. I didn't, no, not necessarily. I mean, you can do annotation, and, but yeah. I would think of it more of like revealing the diagrammatic content. 
um, okay. as a layer of drawing information. So think of it as a drawing as much as it is uh, a spatial representation or a rendering. Yes, I got it. Got it now. All right, thanks so much, sir. Appreciate your yep. help. I'll see you on Monday. Okay. Yep, have a good one, Mike. Yep, see you Monday. See you, sir. Bye, Milan. Hi, Safi. Bye. <laughs> hey, Mike, what's going on? Uh, last but not least. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm going to be this, this, um, this, I don't know, I'm not going to be yelling. I hope not. This is, is this a good uh, tone? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. So, uh, let me give you my outline. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a very rough outline, but uh, no need for you to worry at all. Uh, it sounds very uh, uh, promising, but no, seriously, no need for you to worry. So, I'm having an interview with Charles, Charles right now. Um, look, uh, Mike, can you look at me for a second? There's two aspects of my project to explain returners, returning citizens, reality, not spatiality. Reality is spatiality. In my, according to the, um, the, the cleanup work that I've done. So the outline begins by showing a graphic novel, not too long, about a macro view of the, of the overall research and the types of uh, returning citizens and their cons uh, constraints, very broad, not very general. This is going to be drawn from midterm, Zim, as well as, you know, like current uh, research. Now, this aspect is going to shoot to be provocative, not evocative, unlike the other aspect of my, let's say, uh, um, uh, uh, of, of my project. The other aspect is the micro, which is the sample, which is the returner, which his name is Charles, and I will not use his first name, none of his identity or even his face, but he will be videoed in, a, in an interview, and I will be asking him four core questions. Um, who, who he, who, who uh, um, essentially, who are you, and... Um, uh, where were you and where are you right now and where will you want to be? And these four questions are going to essentially define the social, the economical, as well as the housing uh, constraints. This also is going to shoot to be um, as um, a method of illustrating how this one returner I want to say uh, situation or background uh, reflects against the macro view of returners' uh, realities because every returner is, has his own specific context, constraints, and everything else, right? Sure. In their own place. And so um, I'm only sticking to one um, uh, returner, and this interview is going to be conducted in just like a, essentially like a cafe shop. Um, um, I will organize it so that I give an, uh, a one minute o overview of the project and then I just shoot down in just three minutes uh, all these, I want to say, uh, um, uh, constraints and then I stop it at where I think it will be delivering the one second. Let me just share my screen. Can you see, sure. my, can you uh, see my screen? Hello. I'm using my phone. It's cool. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? I do not see your screen. Okay, one second. Let's just say camera. No, zoom. All right, cool. So start recording. I guess. Everything on the screen, including the notifications, will be recorded. Enabled in that. No, 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 no. Start back. Yes. Okay. Do you see this? No. All right. Cool. Oh, no, so, yes. I see something now. I see your screen now. All right, cool. Uh, boom, 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 and boom. So, okay. So, right here. Look at this. 
Okay. So there is there is the the micro which shows the research and the overview. This is this is going to be the first part of my research, uh, or like I want to say product. And the second part of the product is going to be the micro. And this is going to shoot to show a specific I want to say aspect. And I think I drew on top of this. Uh, yeah. So let's say this is like the over. You see this this chart right here. I will yeah. make sure that let's say um, that two pieces, the video which you see right now, and it's high, uh, bubbled as, as micro, and the mic macro, which is this chart, gets to be deep, gets to have charms uh, highlighted in with specificity and um, I want to say context. I will also try to have I want to say the macro. I don't know what we're doing right here. Oh my God! Sorry. Yeah, so this is like, I want to say, uh, I will try to have them, the video to have, I want to say, um, like these ma major questions answered. Right. And after this, uh, macro is going to focus on illustrating a story and not just dumping a lot of research. So I will not focus a lot on, let's say, what he committed, what type of crime, or um, um, how was the, uh, the prison process, or after he got out. I'm not going to show all of that particularly, but I'm, I'm going to make sure that I connect part two to part one. And I showed up to the lecture. That was a really cool lecture. That's it. So what do you think? Uh, I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's pretty much all I want to do. Um, I don't know why is this, oh, it's still recording, all right, do you see me? You see, yeah, you, you I see, see you now. All right, cool. Uh, so what do you think? I think you have a lot of work to do. No, I don't. Okay. I don't worry about it, because the video is essentially an interview, and I'll just curate that today. And um, the research, the grant. I want to say the background research is all done. All I have to do is just lay it out in a sense where I explain the different types of returners. That's the key of part one. Part two is showing one specific case. Overall, overall, I want to say purpose of this project is to have people connect um, uh, both empathetically with, with the video as well as um, just like through, these, through this data to that major concern of where and how returners are being treated in our communities. Sure. Okay? Yeah. All right. I will use and make sure that I uh, state to Charles that none of his, I want to say, private information like name, face, or anything else is going to be shown, except my face is going to be shown. And um, yeah, that's it. What do you think? I... I mean, regardless of what you think, I still think you have a lot of work to do because I haven't, I don't know what you're working on. I mean, I can like, I sort of understand. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to parse through it because it's hard to respond to just your thoughts at this point in particular. I think it's, I think it could be great. I don't know. Depends it's executed cleanly, right? Sure. So does it sound like a good idea? Yeah, no, it sounds like a good idea. Um, and Mike, I'm not afraid of criticism. Please do like, like rip on the idea. Like I have room to, I'm not essentially broadening the scope. I'm asking you, is my scope, um, legit for that level of, I want to say, uh, project because everybody is doing like, I want to say different approach to everything, to different concerns, different yeah. topics and everybody found a different way of communicating or creating this, I want to say, uh, um, um, project delivery method. My project delivery method is after I spoke about it with like, I want to say advisors and Dr. Franco and whatever, I realized that the best way of doing this without invasing, uh, in, invading anybody's privacy and being invasive is through like blurring people's faces and just um, maybe like one person's faces and just like, essentially show uh, word of mouth, uh, like the returner's word of mouth, and maybe like shoot to be like a scenographer, kind of like a reality type of show. And while still giving like an author type of uh, criticism on 
or not even criticism, like overview of what the subject is. Yeah, I speak a lot. Oh, What's that? I, I spoke, spoke too much. Sorry, I I don't want to say that I didn't value desperate, but um, it didn't work out with my time to bring you something. And uh, I know it's frustrating for you to just uh, uh, not have a graphic input or let's say. Well, so like, so the graphic input, like it sort of forces you to make a decision and be clear about what direction you're taking when you talk about it like you can speak in these very vague ways and like it can be this it can be that and like it's hard to my criticism would be like i don't know what the hell you're talking about like i sort of get it i get like this cloud of description but it's not very clear and it be and so like if it was drawn if there was some kind of graphic i would i could be able to understand the logic behind what you're doing but you're, you're the way you're talking about it it's like there's a series of statements you kind of veer into a direction you come back into another direction it could come together i'm not really sure um because every statement leads to another 20 questions and so like it hasn't you it hasn't been distilled down into a very clear set of logics um, and okay. so the, the value of putting that, that stuff down on paper, even in research, I know in your mind, like it's the research is already done, but it's not because like the research is done when it's actually on paper in some way, whether it's text or graphics or whatever, because all that stuff, that's not just because like I need to see visual information, but it, it compels you to clarify and distill down a thought into a clear graphic or if it's not clear it will be visually it will visually show that it's not clear and so i mean i think you're more or less going in the right direction i don't i don't like to i'm not able to sit here and unpack all of it and kind of repackage it into a direction uh just talk talking through it no i'm i'm essentially throwing a freestyle uh kind of a rap on you and i'm trying i'm expecting you to kind of like catch it all and say uh like kind of wrap back to me what you think and uh it's not the same as having you know subtitles as well as a video montage or something like that That's correct yeah I, I get it i get it and uh no excuses that's it uh you can i don't know uh consider that uh I honestly can't say that I haven't uh, paid attention to this subject, but it's 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 been, it's, it's been kind of uh, uh, difficult to meet uh, the timeline, as well as the uh, the the necessary just like need them uh, just like reach that mental I want to say zone of just like hammering this thing through one go. So, so I'm just gonna um, honestly, I'm not I'm not expecting anything from the desperate, and that was my mistake. But what I can do to reassure you on delivery is uh, um, show you essentially the pro the progress of just like uh, maybe even Instagram it. By the way, I sent you on Instagram. Uh, request so I can share you some links, but if you think that's uh, a, a different thing, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to share you just a bunch of things on um, uh, Slack, just as snippets of uh, uh, progress views, maybe, uh, graphics as well as just the research. And they might not be clear. You can comment absolutely on them if you want any clarification. It will bog me down because I will be explaining, but long story short, you get to be included in the graphic process and you, I may, and honestly, I also need this constructive criticism which you just gave me, which is like having the research in there laid out, 
in a certain graphic sense absolutely needs to be criticized. So um, let me get this to you by the latest uh, Friday night. Okay. No later. All right. Thank you, Mike. And, uh, sorry, what did you say? I'll, and I'll respond. Okay. Um, I guess one more question I got for you. Yeah. Um, this uh, video portion in which uh, I'm doing, because I have two portions, the part A, yeah. the macro, and the micro. The ma micro, I'm essentially interviewing Charles today, having a one through again with this script I prepared, uh, yeah. which is like essentially, um, it's, it's a written, I don't know, like project manifesto of what a return is, uh, reality uh, is against, let's say, in, in housing situation, social situation, as well as like, I, I already went through this. Do you have any more questions I should use? Is there any, I want to say like, uh, I don't know, like uh, feedback, because I'm essentially just going to be prompting my camera to just shoot us both and we're going to have this dialogue back and forth in a very quiet place and that's it. And that's what the video is going to be four minutes. Just ask these straight up questions and he's going to be like, the, let's say the sample or the witness. Because like when I presented this project to, let's say, Dr. Franco or sorry, the other professor or other uh, uh, tutors, they were all saying, what you're saying is great. What you're showing is also cool. Like the process of like live the midterm and they're like but it's not the same as it's not empathetic we want to see and hear this from our returner is there anything that you want me to have in consideration he's coming by the way no i think i think the more you can uh learn through the interview process with Charles and whatever other individuals and kind of visually represent that or express that and help us understand that, that makes it easier. Okay. Um, say that again. Uh, I think the, I think the more, um, the more you can kind of visually express and elaborate on the experiences that Charles has, yeah, that's going to be in the macro, but yeah. in the micro. Right, right, right. Well, then it ends up in the, the macro potentially too. I think, I think just the more you can draw out of that and, and give it visual representation, the more empathetic it is and the more value you're providing as a, a kind of designer of space. Thank you so much. I got to call okay. him back before he leaves, but thank you so much, Mike. All right, I'll see you. Friday night. Bye. All right.